And the protests included more than just our bridges and our roads. This demonstration in the South Bay got tense for a few moments. This was outside the Tesla factory in Fremont last night. Protesters caravan there, part of a nationwide day of action, demanding a ceasefire in Gaza and an end to all U.S. aid to Israel. I see so many people I know that just keep just going back to their daily life because they don't want to deal with it. We're just going to keep saying, no, we're still here. You know, you, you can't just turn your eye away from this. I think ultimately everybody just wants to go home and, and live in peace and that's all we're here fostering. This blockade is not to be targeting the employees. Our employees here are going to be safe. We have nothing to do with that. This is mainly just to force the economic blockade and show that we are not going to be complicit with genocide where, wherever it may be. Well, yesterday you might have been caught up in this. Hundreds of protesters shut down these major Bay Area arteries, 880 in Oakland and the Golden Gate Bridge, all to draw attention to the war in Gaza. Some even used chains and barrels filled with concrete to block the road. We asked one of the protesters on 880 about their message yesterday. They want to say that they're condemning what's happening and what Israel is doing, saying they want Israel to be nicer and kill fewer civilians. At the same time, they are giving them bombs and money. Well, the shutdowns lasted into the early afternoon before CHP was able to get all the lanes reopened. We know some commuters were stuck in their car for cars for more than four hours. At the beginning with, I was kind of afraid. I, I didn't know what was going on. You know, I was afraid for my life. This is not fair for, you know, a lot of people, they go into work, you know, they're trying to, you know, make some money and uh, look what happened. And while the CHP had their attention on 880, another group took over the Golden Gate Bridge. Highway Patrol said they thought something like this might happen, but did not know specific plans. Protest organizers were very clear that this action was not their last, and a spokesperson told us what's expected to come next. We're going to keep pushing until people pay attention. We know from our history that people's actions work, and they won't listen to us unless we hit them where it hurts, which is in, a, in the economic region. And as the hours dragged on, commuters stuck on the roads had no choice but to wait it out. Although some were sympathetic to the protesters, some were also very frustrated. Like, yes, it's an inconvenience, but it's also an inconvenient to be a human being in Gaza. And when you have this level of a disruption to our whole transportation system, I think we need to draw a line. CHP says they arrested 26 protesters at the bridge demonstration. Four cars were impounded. A total of 38 people were arrested across both protests at the Golden Gate Bridge and 880. And our Sean Chittenis reports from the Golden Gate Bridge with a breakdown of the charges that they will face. It's turning out to be another typical morning along the Golden Gate Bridge with traffic moving in both directions. Quite the difference from what we saw yesterday. Today we know more about what charges protesters will be facing. 
because of their actions on the bridge. Those charges include unlawful assembly, resisting an officer conspiracy, as well as false imprisonment. And that last one is a new charge we haven't seen before because of what they were able to do, keeping people stuck in their cars for hours. It speaks to the amount of preparedness that these protesters had for their actions, making sure it was as difficult as possible to remove them with heavy chains and barrels filled with cement. The CHP was quick to get in position on the Bay Bridge during all of this, but experts say they can only be so proactive with their current staffing. Every single law enforcement agency in California is shorthanded. And the more that we put these folks in a, in a position where they're sitting idly on a bridge, the more they can be doing things more productive elsewhere. So that's sort of a double-edged sword and a, and, a, and a personnel manpower challenge that they have to deal with. That's former FBI Special Agent Jeff Harp. He was actually one of the commuters caught up in the traffic yesterday. He says another thing that makes these kinds of protests tough to get ahead of, we're no longer seeing planning happening on social media. It's all going down on encrypted channels. And while some lawyers say that new charge of false imprisonment is excessive, other experts say if you look at what protesters are facing in other parts of the country, it's actually lenient. And as crazy as this traffic blockage was, this was not the first time a protest of this magnitude happened. We recently saw one right here on the Bay Bridge just last year. This was the scene on the Bay Bridge in November, protesters calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. This as President Joe Biden and other world leaders were in the Bay Area for the APEC summit. It lasted for several hours. And that's the so-called Bay Bridge 78. They were met with cheers as they walked out of a San Francisco courtroom, avoiding jail time. This was back in March and getting a deal to do community service and pay restitution. 